you guys you guys like Avatar or what? <laughs> check, 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 check. Okay, we're working. We're live. We're, check. we're here. You good? You are good? you are you moderating for us? I'm not moderating, I'm like the question, I'm the runner. You're the, the question, question man. You're the right. question dude. I'm the question man. <laughs> so are awesome. We just, are we QAing this panel? Total QA. Let's do it. I love it. I love a QA. I love a QA. We do whatever Thank you. we want. Or a script reading or whatever, you know. Oh, it's wow. a script. <laughs> So maybe we can all just kind of say a little bit about ourselves, and then yeah. um, maybe we can open up the floor to some questions. And I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I'm Kyle. Kyle, maybe then Kyle can just kind of moderate who Suki has being nice and asking his name, which we did not do. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it. Sorry, Kyle. No worries. Okay. Take it away, Jenny Kwan. Oh, uh, you, uh, you started this. Oh, gosh. Okay, now I feel on the spot. Well, it's so cool to see everybody here. Oh my gosh, you guys are all, it's been so amazing. And I just have to say, first of all, I'm really happy to be here with Olivia and, and Jesse. And it's just, um, it's so cool to be here all together. It's and our first uh, con all together. Yes. Yeah. It's our first this con all exciting. together. But, and it's really cool. I just want to say that um, you guys have all just had this love for Avatar. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. So first of all, being excited. And one more thing before I start talking. I keep talking. It's the afternoon, Wait, I think. one more thing before I start yeah. talking? Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> maybe at the end, you guys, I feel bad because it's my mom's birthday and maybe I was thinking of doing like a selfie with all of us and just saying happy birthday. Would that be okay with you guys? At the end. Okay, she's going to die. But I shouldn't say that because she's 88. But yeah. Um, but yeah, she, <laughs> she's going to love that. Die. She's going to die. She's going to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, I'm Jenny Kwan, and um, I play Suki, your favorite Kyoshi warrior on Avatar. Um, yes, and uh, let's see. I, I'll be very brief since I've been yapping away, and I want to give time to our lovely other lovely um, panelists. Lovely. Too. And exactly. So um, I started acting when I was 11, and I'm not 11 now, but actually one of my first gigs was a voiceover job. I started singing first and doing acting, and um, one of my first jobs when I was 16 was voicing Audrey in Little Shop. Um, oh, wow. So yeah, I'm <laughs> pretty old. But, um, but yeah, so then I went, my, then my other major gig, I played the, anybody like musical theater here? Oh, cool, okay. I played the lead in Miss Saigon. I played Kim on the first national Broadway tour, and, and I did a show called California Dreams, and I've done different guest stars and lots of voiceover stuff, and just, we can talk about that later, that's all. And then Suki, hello. Okay, I'm done. I'll shut up now. Good night. It's funny, because this is a panel where we're supposed to, to talk about us, and you're like trying to, it's well, I okay. I want to give you time, There's too, so Jessie. much time. We okay. have all the time. We're good. We all can right. fit so much into this hour. It's going to be great. Okay, cool. Well, I'll, but literally, I'll shut up now, because whoever <laughs> wants to talk next. Also, she cracks me up, because she's always like, I'm not 11 anymore. She, I thought she was like my age when I first met her. She could be in high school. She's like, I like so old. I'm like, you look like you're 17. Wait a Shut minute. Up, Jenny. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the story about Miss Jessie Flower here. Oh, God. I was like this, okay. and she was like this with this long hair. And I remember you were wearing a headband, and she wore jeans. And she's like, ah, blah, 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 blah. I was like, who is this Spitfire little thing here? She's still a powerhouse, though, as you guys see. So that's my little story of her. Okay. I'm night. meaning I used to be short and I'm still short. That was the, that was the motto of that story. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, do you want to go? Take it. Yeah, okay. You're all right. Mike. All right. All right. Um, my name is lots of things, uh, but my, you probably, in the credits, it's Jesse Flower, and my birth name is Michaela Jill Murphy. Um, quick shout out to Dominic and Austin. By the way, are you guys here? Oh, hello! <laughs> um, and I just wanted to say hi. Um, but I voice Toph Beifong, uh, The Blind Bandit, The Runaway, Melon Lord. Toph also has like bajillions of different names. So uh, I was six years old. Just quick little backstory about the names. People were mispronouncing. Uh, I had a different last name at the time. It was Mayhair, and it was spelled with a silent GH. And so I got a lot of Michelin Meagers or Michela Meager, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to make this easy. You know what a cool name is? Jesse. Yeah. Jesse is a cool name. So I made it Jesse. And now it's in all the credits of everything, and I was not expecting that, but <laughs> there it is. So that's the, the quick name story. Uh, I started acting also when I was very young, similar to Jenny. I actually got started when I was about five. 
Uh, I just always had a flair for the dramatic. A friend was in a commercial and I was like, hey mom, that seems cool. Can we try that? And so she's like, yeah, let's, let's put you in a musical and see how you do. It was Oliver. I was an orphan. It was great. Um, <laughs> those two things together sounds funny. Uh, but it was, I, lo I loved it so much. And so we got some headshots done and um, I started in commercial work and then found voiceover as it started becoming more and more of an industry. And the first thing I actually uh, voiced was one, well, I guess it was me and a group of other kids, but all the baby turtles and the baby fish and Finding Nemo, that was my first voiceover gig ever. It was really fun. Those I some get good to residuals. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I still, I still get like $5, I Finding Nemo. I'm like, cool, <laughs> yay. So um, yeah, that was my first voiceover gig. And I think for me, which maybe we'll get to a bit more in the Q&A, but I kind of grew naturally in voiceover because it was kind of away from the cameras and not as on display. I, I had a little bit of a, I don't know, audition room fright, I guess. Like on stage was fine, but in an audition room where the director was like right in front of you, like sitting behind a table being like, okay, try it again like this. I was like, ha! You don't like so. a bunch of people acting in front of a bunch of people eating lunch? Yeah. No? <laughs> no. Taking no. phone calls? Not no, good. and then being like, yeah, that was great. Okay, bye, have a good day. Exactly. Like, oh, okay. So Thanks. yeah, the, the voiceover booth and I got very well acquainted because I got to just be my loud little weird self and just have it go into the microphone and then get feedback through some headphones. So it was kind of nice because I felt simultaneously like a little more protected weirdly just like kind of in that recording booth um, and also like I just got to make more choices as an actor as opposed to on camera stuff so it just kind of was a good little relationship for a while uh, and then I went on to do lots of other things and thought I was going to be a surgeon and whatever but we've moved our way back to the performing arts and I've started writing a little bit more and finding friends again in voiceover and now we're here so that's a little bit about me. Miss Tylee. Y'all, I'm tired. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try, I'm gonna summon Michaela's energy right here. Um, so my name's Olivia Hack. I play Ty Lee in Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, yes, yes, yes. And your auras are all very pink. Um, I was a kid actor as well. Uh, same, you know, TV and commercials and all that stuff. Uh, and then I did a movie called The Brady Bunch Movie, two of those. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then my first one, <laughs> Kayla's laughing at me right now, I don't know. Um, and then, uh, the first real animated series that I did was a show called Hey Arnold. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is still my favorite, like, people always are like, what's your favorite animated show you worked on? And y'all want me to say Avatar, and Avatar's great, but Hey Arnold for me, because that was my childhood, you know? It was your childhood, but it was my childhood too. Um, and I just love that show. Uh, and we just had our 25th anniversary two days ago. Um, cause, cause we old. Uh, <laughs> um, and then, yeah, did Avatar at some point. I wasn't a kid when I did that, like Michaela, um, no. and, and Jenny. Yeah, but, we were, um, we weren't young and spry. No. We were like, but, oh, <laughs> you're killing me. You got, like, uh, but yeah, uh, and Avatar has been a great experience and I just, primarily do VO now, which I love doing and always trying to do more of. And I, I yeah, I mean, that's my career tra tra trajectory. I don't Traje know. Tra trajectory. Trajectory. Uh, Not drunk, but I would love to be. <laughs> uh, she will be later. Well, uh, maybe a little bit later. Yeah, no, bit. yeah. Uh, yeah, who's going to the bowling alley karaoke thing tonight? Is that all? Oh, we're, we're all doing that? Try to hit okay, that all going to be there? Right. You're going to see me perform some Billy Joel, probably, because you, yes. <laughs> you can talk your way through Billy Joel. You don't actually have to sing. Um, questions? Are we gonna, are we gonna uh, just jump just, into oh, it? Let's just jump into it. All right. I think we have to go with this person and, right here. And and a question. And let's, when we ask a question, let's stand up. Twinkle Toast yeah. has a question. There we go. Yeah. Hi guys. I'm not Ang, I'm Patrick. Hello. <laughs> um, so, ultimate question, who would win in a fight? Suki, Tylee, or Toph. Ooh, so pitting us against each other. Yes. Wow, already women okay. in Hollywood. No, I'm we just kidding. Patrick, I'm kidding. We see okay. Is Suki a bender? I no. A fan bender. A fan yes. bender. What's her, bender. what's her power? Chi bender. Chi bender. She's your chi bender, like me. You're, I'm a chi You're blocker. a chi. Well, what's the difference well, between a chi bender and a chi blocker? Is that <laughs> one the, is good and was bad? I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I have not seen the entire show. Well. <laughs> May just looked at me like I <laughs> killed a child in front uh -oh. of her. It's okay. They're gonna come it's after. It's all right. Well, that's why you came to our side. Yeah, y'all are that's gonna right. educate me. It's good. That's right. Well, my thing, see, here's the thing. If Ty Lee comes in 
you know, with, with, she's very agile, right? She's an acrobat. So if she somehow gets off the ground for an attack and I can't figure out what her trajectory is, that, that could be, that could be a pressure point points. for me. Pressure and points. then you come in from like above and I don't know which angle you're coming no, from. But really well, though, feel is, it. is she bending Not and she's blocking a separate well, thing? True. No, it's not. Okay. No. Okay. So yeah, you're a chi blocker too? No. Are you looking at me or are you yeah. looking, no, I'm looking at you? <laughs> no. No? What do you do then? I use my fan and I'm a warrior. I only have like been in the circus skills. for a few like, years. Don't only, mind her. She's not only <laughs> fan, but I know how to fight, y'all. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, She's right. really good at martial arts and, and also using her fans using as fans. Okay. Who do defense you, who do you think and offense. takes it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he, yeah. No pressure. The greatest earthbender of all time. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think given all normal circumstances, I would probably win. <laughs> just, I, just, I'm guessing. Maybe Fair. I could be proven wrong. Well, because Fair you also use the earth. Like, yeah, I can feel you. Unless you right. get they're in the air. That's it. That's the only thing we're at. That's why I'm so freaked out. When I'm on Appa, yeah. I'm like, I can't see anything. <laughs> so I'm freaked out, holding onto the edge the whole time. <laughs> Questions? Questions? Hello again. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Kyle. And I would just like to ask, out of all your voice acting years and your years as, an actor, as actresses, what was your best experience when ever voice acting for a scene or any kind of episode for whatever show you guys were in? So, hmm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, so taking it back to Hey Arnold, uh, and we did this a little bit in Avatar too, but when you record as a cast, um, it sounds so different because like when I do an anime, they always record those separately, right? Because you're dubbing, you're just going straight off picture. And I'll watch my anime performances and hate them because I don't know what the actor who's delivering the line to me sounds like, right? So sometimes I hear it back, I'm like, oh, I would not have said it that way at all. And not just anime, if you record separately, you know, you're not acting with anybody. Uh, and so with Hey Arnold, we would go in every, with, with Avatar, we would record just our scenes together, but with Hey Arnold, we would record the whole script. So you're there the whole four hours, a, an animated show takes four hours to record. Um, and we would sit there and we'd do the whole thing. And it was, for me, it was great because it was like my after school activity, you know, every Thursday or whatever, um, for years and years. And yeah, so there's just a different experience and also like a camaraderie and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, for me, it's, it's that for sure. Jenny? I would say, and I, I love sharing this story, um, I want to say it was the last episode of recording Avatar. So most of us were in that booth. It was at Nickelodeon. And... I just remember, I was like, oh my gosh, I get to be in this room with so many amazing voice actors. And like Alibu was saying, it's just a different energy when you are saying your lines, delivering them, and then you get that automatic response. You get the reaction to your castmate. Well, here's a bit of an airhead I am. So we're all in the room and we're recording and I'm thinking, I couldn't see everybody because someone was in the very corner because there wasn't enough room in the studio and so I just kept hearing this voice and I, it was like the voice of God but not a good God and I was like where where is that voice coming from oh my gosh like it's reverberating through my whole body and and so I was like oh gosh wow he's he's really good so we're doing this like little rap party and I'm just you know we're all kind of just chatting and Dante's you know here we're just chatting Dante, we're giving him a shout out. Hey, you should have been here, but whatever. We're, you're here in spirit. Everybody keeps asking about you, Dante, whatever. So anyway, this, this man comes over and he just starts talking and I'm just talking with him and he's very nice, you know? And um, so then Dante's like, do you know who that was? I'm like, no. He's like, that was Mark Hamill. I'm like, what? I'm like, he's like the fire lord. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I was just I'm talking. so jealous. I literally was like, so I don't know, you know, like I, we're just all here, you know, and I hadn't seen him since he was in Star Wars and I just was like, okay, there you go. Um, I got to just record with Mark Hamill, legend, dairy actor, VO person. Very and casual. Done. Okay, good night. Michaela, favorite VO moment? Uh, 
Suki's Suki's I'm sorry <laughs> you know it just it happens I have I don't know why I'm so sorry <laughs> um, Jenny's example is, is probably up there as one of mine honestly because it you know anytime you get to be with especially when you're younger when you get to be with all the adults and you're like doing you know recording stuff together you're like yeah I'm with the old people Older, older. Those are fighting words. You did that to yourself. You uh -oh. keep saying it. <laughs> um, it's true, when you're a child actor and you're working with adults, you're like, I'm very adult. Yeah. You're very mature. Even Meanwhile, though you're not. they're all like, there's a break and all the adults are chain smoking. And they're like, hey, kid, go to school. Yeah. <laughs> go to take your math test that you were supposed to do yesterday, but you couldn't because you were recording. Um, but no, one of my favorite, this is very random. I was, I believe, recording... Um, uh, an episode of The Emperor's New School when I was Chaka, the yeah, super squeaky chick. And, uh, <laughs> and I walked out, and I don't remember if he was like practicing lines, but SpongeBob, the voice of SpongeBob, was sitting in the waiting room. He was coming into the studio after me, and I just remember being like, well, that's cool. I was like, hi, I'm from this show. He's like, hi, I'm SpongeBob. I'm like, yes, you are. <laughs> so <laughs> it was cool, because I got to just kind of be a little bit of a fan, but also like well on the job, and just be like, can I get your autograph? Is that weird? Can I get your autograph? And he's like, sure. And I was just like, awesome. It was nice to meet you. She's like, all right. Hope you had a good session. I'm like, hope you have a good one too. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> so that was that was a fun highlight of over the course of my my time. Yeah. <laughs> Making Kyle walk for it. Yay. <laughs> Hello, I'm Devin. Nice shirt. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so like I was saying earlier, um at your guys' booths about how Avatar has become so big because of social media and how things have changed. Um, the live action Avatar show that they're making for Netflix. How do, how do you guys feel about that? You have feelings. <laughs> I heard like, feelings. The movie, live action movie was so bad. But I don't know what you're talking about. It. We don't know what that <laughs> is. What are you talking about? There's I, a movie? I've never seen it. I don't. Yeah. Bits and pieces. How do, what do you... How do you feel about the sh live action show? Well, here's happen? the thing. Mike and Brian are very specific human beings, right? They have clearly an idea in their mind. Yeah, but they're not they doing the live action show anymore, right? Would you let me finish, okay. Riley? Give her a chance. Ladies, ladies, I ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so, correct. Uh, but the, they, have, they had an idea for the original series. It was three seasons, right? Everybody's clamoring for a fourth. They're like, no, this is the story. We're making it the way we want, right? So then they're like, okay. They want something more. We prob they probably had this idea already, honestly, before people asked. But for Korra, they created a whole new world, new characters, technically related, but they didn't just continue based off of clamor, right? They've never been about the views or the people, whatever. They want to maintain the integrity of their story. So if they stepped away from the project, that means that somewhere along the line, they probably weren't being heard enough for them to feel like they could accurately portray everything. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to not be good. We'll probably like it. I'm assuming it'll be better than the thing that shall not be named, but, <laughs> but it still won't be their full vision. And I'm so curious, which we probably won't ever get to see it, unfortunately, but I am curious what their vision was and why it was either too much or too expensive or too long for shooting. I don't know what the issue was, but I'm excited to watch it and hold it as its own thing, separate. I'm not gonna try to relate it to anything. Just like when you watch Corey, you shouldn't relate it to the original. Just keep it separate. Um, and just try to appreciate it for what it is, and hopefully it brings more love and more fans to Avatar, right? Well, it's so. kind of Good interesting, point. too, that after they walked away, then they announced that Avatar Studios thing, you know? Well, yeah. So they're not anti-Avatar. I wonder if like that happened because they stepped away. They're like, you know what? We need our own thing. And Nickelodeon's like, here's your own thing. Something. I, I mean, know. it sounds kind of like a shock. And Basically, we did a panel, and I called the new TV show redundant, and then that got put on the internet. But <laughs> I, you know, well, I can stand by. That. I mean, I that come wasn't out of like my, my follow-up. Um, you said about the studio. If they would come to you and ask if you wanted to do, like, when you guys were older, like in Legend of Korra, how they showed you as adults, would you be interested in taking your rules back, or even be interested in taking over someone else's character for that show? If they ask. I mean, that would be kind of funny to say no. I don't know. I know. I mean, if they ask, by all means. But I mean, it's also, I'm not expecting it. Well, I definitely am not expecting it because I've auditioned for Cora like three times. Uh, did you really? I did. Oh, damn. Do you so, have feelings about that? I auditioned for, I think I auditioned for the role of Cora. Oh. And then I auditioned for two, they called me in to do a couple other roles. And I was like, wait a minute, but am I not in the... 
Avatar family, but... Did you work on Korra? No. no, no. I never got cast. Uh, yeah. uh, but if they did ask me to... Yes, Look, yes. Dante is a god and a legend. <laughs> okay. We all know this. We get it. We don't need to say that anymore. But, um, but if they did, you know, reprise Suki's role, I mean, absolutely. I, I would hope so. Yes. So. Hopefully. I mean, I still have the same voice, basically, you know, and she's a little bit older now, so I think I could handle that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm an actor. I never say, I don't say no to anything. Look at my resume on IMDb. I say no to nothing. Um, <laughs> uh, next question? Questions? Hi, I'm Anna. Hi. Um, Hi, Anna. Um, first of all, a big fan. Second of all, if you had to choose a time period of which your character would be put into, where do you think they would fit best? Hmm, that's a great question. That I've thought about for myself, but not for Toph. I feel like Ty Lee would be like in the 50s when everybody was still like happy and perky and <laughs> right and weren't beaten down by life maybe. I don't know. I mean, like, she's not in the 60s. She's not a hit. Maybe in the 60s because she's talking about auras, right? Cute. Let's put her in the 60s. Auras. Well, I think Toph would be, I mean, she likes to roll around in the dirt with no shoes on, so she'd probably be the 70s, right? <laughs> right? She'd, she'd be at Woodstock. She'd be there. She'd be making it happen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would say medieval times for Suki, kind of uh, paving the way, and she has that armor. Mm -hmm. So she already kind of fits in there. Well, yeah, I guess it would be the 70s or, like, the 1200s, where there's, like, nothing and it's only dirt. I feel like you have to pick, <laughs> pick one. Maybe in, like, Greek, like, old ancient Greece where there's, like, barely anything. Yeah, so one of the two. I don't know. Maybe she'd fit better in that time period than the 70s. I don't know. It's a toss-up. Yeah, it's a toss-up. It's a toss-up. Yeah, toss-up. <laughs> nice pun on the words. Good, good job. I like that. Hello, my name is Dave. Hey, Hello, Dave. Dave. Uh, my question is, was there ever a blooper reel, or did everybody deliver their lines perfectly during Avatar? They don't ever? really make blooper reel. We, we, oh, blah, there blah, you blah, go. Blah, 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 there blah, you blah, go. Blah, blah, they don't really make blooper reels for animation just because they'd have to pay to animate it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But a blooper, blooper reels are my favorite. However, I will say, I don't know about your experiences. I feel like for the most part, because they send you the scripts ahead of time, whether or not you end up having time to read all of your lines beforehand, huh, I don't know. But uh, there was at least some familiarity, so I feel like a lot of bloopers, in my experience anyway, is whenever I'm given something to cold read, or I'm not exactly sure how, like what's happening before or after, and then I mess up the, the intonation of the delivery. Um, so mostly, actually, when I was in, in the booth, there weren't too many, too many bloopers, because uh, I was pretty much like, oh, great. I know what's going on, I know the scene, and so I would give a delivery, and they're like, pretty good, can you just like, give it a little more, uh, a little more angsty, a little more sassy, a little more upset, whatever, and I would just adjust accordingly, and then be like, cool, all right, moving on to the next one, whatever, so I don't know about Michaela's you guys. Michaela's a professional, Yeah, what she's trying to say. <laughs> because I'm a walking blooper, like, if you guys would see me in my booth during auditions, it's like, bleh, 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 and literally, <laughs> seriously, and whenever I do anime, I'm like, ugh, tripping over my words, and Oh my gosh, it's, I, I, I have always thought about this. I need to put like a reels together of all my bloopers. And I work with my one friend who directs me in some anime and he's always asking, I won't do it now, but he's always asking me and he's like, Jenny, okay, give me one of these. And it's always like all expletives, you know, like in, in my character. And I was like, can we just do all the takes like that? That was fun. But yeah, I, I'm just a, literally a walking blooper. It's, it's unreal. I mean, Ty Lee is a blooper because I didn't read the scripts for Avatar because I came in on season two, right? This guy's looking at me like, how dare you? You haven't watched the show. What's going on? This is not the panel I expected. Um, so I, I came in on season two, right? So I got the scripts and I was like, fire lord, Brendan, like, what does this mean, right? Like, so if you don't have any context, you're, so I did what a lot of actors do, which is they read a script and they go, bullshit, bullshit, my line, bullshit, bullshit, my line. So, so that being said, I didn't know Ty Lee was a bad guy, right? So like, she's real perky and stuff because I came in, I think they had already cast somebody else for Ty Lee because the first couple episodes I was dubbing to picture because I guess I had replaced someone. So I just saw her. She was pink. She was cute. She's at the circus, 
right? So she's going to be cute. She's going to sound like that. I, and then later, it wasn't until I did a con, I'm not kidding, 10 years later in Australia, right? With Dante, my first con ever. And I rolled up there. First off, I didn't even know Avatar was popular because you have to realize before social media, yeah. I had no idea. you know, you do a show and it keeps getting renewed. So you're like, I guess people are watching this. But Avatar only went for three seasons. So I kind of done it and forgotten about it, to be frank. So I got there, and I thought they were flying me to Australia. I don't know, because I'm fabulous or something. And they put all these pictures in front of me, and I'm like, what character is this? And Dante's sitting here, and he's like, Olivia, don't you know this, this show is very popular? And I was like, I didn't know. And, and then I watched some of it, and I'm like, she's riding a lizard. And then people were like, what's it like to be a villain in Avatar? I was like, a villain? I, so anyway, late, late to the party, but very happy to be here. Uh, questions? Hi. We met before. Yeah. Hi. I'm Alejandra. And what I wanted to ask, actually, is if your characters could be in 2021, what would they be doing? And Like, how would they be like? I feel like... Suki is, would fit right into 2021 because she is someone who is of service and again is wants to do the good thing and help people and you know obviously we're kind of going through this crazy time right now of transformation and hopefully rebirth and I think she would really still be just wanting to put herself in the places where she could help however she can fight the good fight. Tylee would be doing what I'm doing, which is hanging out on the beach and flirting with boys. So that's it. That's it. We, we are the same person. Very transferable. Yeah, Tylee's character into today. I feel like that works out very well. Um, I feel like Toph would be simultaneously like partnering with, um, what's her last name? Like Greta, Greta Thunberg, Thunberg, the, the like, yeah, the earth advocate. Yes. Who is like that. also like 12. So she'd probably be like, yeah, we're going to like fix the world together and make it like a better place and clean up the air and the oceans. But I feel like she also would kind of be into TikTok. <laughs> I don't know why. Cause she'd be one of those very like grungy, sassy where they like barely do anything. Very minimalist, like dancing where she'd just like bend a rock and like make something explode and then just be like, and then that, and it would just be full of that. And she'd be like, yeah, let's share this with the world, but in a very low-key way. Can and I ask also a save the really world. dumb Toph question? <laughs> okay. Okay, no, really, like, I don't know the answer to this. Like, Toph is blind, I know this. Yes. Can she ever see? You mean with her eyes or just in general? She sees with her feet. That's why she's barefoot. How? Because... She feels so she's So because she's an earthbender. Now, okay. not everybody feels this way, but I, see, early on, she, was, she discovered she was an earthbender, right? And then she met the Badgermoles underground, and they, like, taught her to be one with the earth. So she uses her connection with her bare feet to make her a stronger earthbender because she can feel the vibrations since she like has a bat, heightened... Kinda. Yes. She has heightened senses because she's blind, so she can feel everything. Okay. Yeah, and that's how she sees. Okay. Okay. Just yeah. curious. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a season and a half. I, I just haven't seen the second half of the season. She missed those uh, those honor society streams during quarantine. That's yeah. Look, the whole point was we were drinking during those, so she doesn't remember them. Yeah. Were there, I were, I she was there, but maybe just wasn't there. Wasn't there. No, yeah. Hi, I'm Austin. Hi. Hey, Jesse Austin. knows me enough. I was at her table enough. So. <laughs> and I'm going to ask this question. I can't believe I didn't even ask it to you when I was at your table. But I guess not even just like for the Avatar characters that you guys played, because like, I'm sure everybody in this room feels some type of way. But we all had a takeaway from the show. Like it really, I mean, at least changed my life about how I view myself and view my life, you know. But have you know, has your character, have, like what's your takeaway from your characters that ha helped you with your life or taught you how, anything how to be a, a different person in your life it's taught olivia how to be on a beach and flirt with boys uh, <laughs> no, i have kidding. seen the beach episode and i do really like that one because tylee has a you know a good backstory and i think you know she's very as am i very positive you know and very perky but there's a, you know an undercurrent of depth with her and also too um i'm blanking i'm halfway through of my okay. talking um think about it no i yeah uh, I'm jet lagged, guys. Um, <laughs> be, go easy on me. Um, but no, I mean, I think that she really is misunderstood, you know? Um, but 
Yeah, I. But she also tries to look on the bright side and all that stuff, which is kind of my whole bag. Um, yeah, I don't just being positive, which I can relate to. I find it. Sorry, before no, you answer, but I find it's kind of funny. I don't know. I, I haven't studied this as much, but I find that there is a lot of crossover in who is cast for an animated character, and there being a lot of similarities, weirdly, even if it's not fully animated yet. And part of it is because you are voicing the character, yes, but there are certain story arcs and certain characteristics that were in place before you got cast, and yet they still cross over with who you are as, as a person. And I just, I think it's kind of funny, because I find that with a lot of my fellow cast members for this show specifically, there are lots of similarities in the redeeming qualities and maybe in the not so redeeming qualities as well. And I just think that that's kind of funny. But anyway, sorry, go, Suki. No, no, no. no. I'm calling you Suki forever now. You're not yes. Jenny, you're Suki. I love it. Um, you know, a lot of people reach out to me asking me if I feel like uh, I resonate with Suki. And I actually take that very seriously because I think she, you know, she's a warrior. She is actually a lot more positive than I am and, and sticks to the road. And um, I, I really look up to that and I admire that. And, I, and then when I look back, I'm like, oh, I guess I kind of am similar to that, you know? And, and I feel really lucky, lucky to have voiced her. And it's interesting that you say that because it's true. Be, when they were writing the role, it was like, oh, she's just, she's this warrior. But they really gave her such a, um, maybe not specifically in the actual series, but I don't know if you guys read the Suki Alone novel yet. Um, I actually just did a reading of it. And the writers did a really beautiful job. I think a lot of the times people just see Suki as kind of one dimensional, but she really goes into her dark side, which I really appreciated. Because we all have struggles, right? Like, if we didn't, that wouldn't make us human. And so today, I've felt very touched by some people who've come up and have really shared some personal things. Very touched. And you guys are all wonderful. Amazing. And literally, I, I was like, don't make me cry because my mascara is going to run. But I think that is a, a testament to how the writers wrote each and every one of our characters, that you guys can really take something from them and us too, because I think that's such a beautiful way that you put that, that I'd hope that I could be somewhat like this character, you know? But, um, are you are. I don't are. know, I don't know, but <laughs> anyway. But so yeah, that's a really, really great question. And I feel like as I've gotten older, I mean, first of all, very opinionated, very stubborn. My mother said I'd make a good lawyer. Um, and <laughs> so those two, right in line with, with Toph. But as far as takeaways go, it's funny because it's really taken this last year of it finally being on Netflix and me finally making friends from the show because I was 12 and 13. Everybody else was going out to dinner and going out to bars and have, they all had each other's phone numbers. I was like in middle school and I had math tests the next day. So I did not get to connect with these people until really this last year. And it, the biggest takeaway is really that like, to make something so magical, it, yes, takes the initial vision, but then it just takes a lot of hard work, a lot of different people, and a lot of time and patience. And then on top of all of that, hoping people connect with it and like it as much as the creators do. And that happened. And that was a long lesson because for a while I was very much, very much tough and I was like, I can carry my own weight, right? And it's like, no, shut up. Everybody else is helping you. You couldn't do this by yourself. And we couldn't do this by ourselves, right? So that's probably been my biggest takeaway is that anything worth having, you probably need a, a village and a good village at that. And we have one. So we were lucky. Um, hi, my name's Carrie. I have a question hi. for Toph. Um, did you ever get your life-changing adventure with Zuko? And if not... So, <laughs> I've been bugging him for years. Actually, it was, it was funny, kind of the beginning of me starting to be friends with everybody. He wrote a book called From Rufio to Zuko. It's very cute. It's very fun. I read it. And he was in New York for a book tour. And I found out through Instagram, and I think Sydney and one of uh, Sydney's friends, Bridget, who helps with a lot of Dante's stuff, I somehow found out he was going to be there. And I was like, hey, I want to come say hi. Do you remember me? And so I did. I went to his signing. And then we went out to dinner. We had some drinks. We caught up. We took some photos. And then we did a like last minute, just off the cusp signing at a random uh, comic bookstore in New York the next day for like a few hours and then yeah and then hung out a little bit more so I did get my real life 
life-changing adventure with Zuko in New York, and it was great fun. Aww. But in the show, no. <laughs> well, if, if your character could have one, what do you think they would do? Would it be like a, a blue spirit thing, or? A blue spirit thing, ooh, maybe. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that one. Yeah, oh my gosh, she would love that because she can't see anyway. So maybe they do something at night and like, you know, take, take, take back the night and maybe, I don't know, deliver justice to some like random little thieves in the forest or something. That'd be fun. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Yes, at the back. Hi, I'm Eliza. Hello. Hi. Do you guys have a favorite line or favorite episode from the show? I haven't seen them all. <laughs> but I like the episode Zuko Alone and I like the beach because I just like origin stories for kind of any show or film. Um, and you get a lot of backstory with that. And, but it's also a really fun episode uh, and has a lot of humor in it. And Azula kind of spins out. Um, which is always fun. And yeah, I just, so the beach, probably. And then, oh, what's the one where like they kidnap Appa or something and it's super sad? Appa's, you know, Appa's Lost, Lost Days. Days. Yeah, my God. Yes. All together now, Appa's Harsh. Lost Days. <laughs> uh, Jenny, favorite episode? You just said my favorite episode. Literally, I had no idea, same thing that you were kind of saying earlier. I had no idea that uh, Avatar had a resurgence on Netflix until my friend was like, Jenny, do you know that Avatar is the number one show on Netflix? I'm like, no. And then I worked with this director. He's like, hey, did, and he told me the same thing. And I was like, um, maybe I should post about it. He's like, I don't think they need any help. And so I was like, <laughs> okay, I know. Because he used to work for Nickelodeon. I was like, well, I didn't know. Anyway, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I went back because I was going to do some panels. And so I watched some episodes. And I was, I remember I was in my bed watching Appa's Lost Days and when I'd seen it before, I, I just watched it, but when I watched it this time, I was sobbing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm so happy that Suki got to help him. I totally forgot and then we got in a fight with you guys. So, but like literally up until that point, I was like, oh, oh my God, is he gonna mind again? Give him some peace. But yeah, so I, I think, you know, of course, any episode that I got to voice, I, I loved, but that one really still sticks out to me. Uh, as far as episode go, I know you said episode and, or line, I don't know if you said both or or, but uh, I love Tales of Ba Sing Se just because you get a break in just the relentless, like, fight for justice, saving the world, which is great, but then you just get to have a moment of, like, hey, this is what they do when they're just having a fun day, like, hanging out. And, and you know, you get to see a little bit of, of Toph's more sensitive side where she actually might enjoy some of the more stereotypically girly things but isn't just used to expressing that fully and I wish that was explored a little bit more just because I know that there's more in there but uh, as far as line goes one of her first you know kind of earlier lines in um, the in the library where she's like look there it is that's what it'll sound like when one of you spots it you know it's just a good <laughs> threshold for the rest of the blind jokes for the rest of the series uh yeah so that's that's one of my favorites <laughs> hello witch hat oh, hi hi olivia hi <laughs> yes. it's good talk me too me too me too <laughs> so me and her just watched the episode with the Secret Tunnel song. Um, Secret Tunnel. <laughs> is, that, is that a favorite? Yes, I like to sing it in cameos for people's anniversaries. Even though I wasn't around, I was like, I wasn't around for this episode, but you probably know the words, so sing along. <laughs> That's cute. That's very cute. It's a great song. It, it is a great song. I was singing it today. Well, and oh. D, D. Bradley Baker, who, you know, voiced Momo and Appa, he was, he was Chung, the musician man. So he sang Secret Tunnel. Awesome. D. Bradley Baker is just a phenomenon of a human oh, wow. being. But yeah, Best he's great. working voice actor, in my opinion. Yes. Talent, very so talented. <laughs> Questions? Hi, I'm Desiree. Hi, Desiree. Hey, Desiree. Hi, Desiree. So this is a long-running argument with me and my sister and her husband. Oh are you <laughs> are you team Katang or Zutara? Oh, wow. Everyone's like, huh. <laughs> um, I think, see, Zutara's like what like we want energy-wise. They're kind of like the, uh, 
Oh, what is it? No, you're right, Michaela. Energy, energy. Wise. What is it? That's it's not it. abusive. Hold on. That's not the thing that I'm looking for, but it's it's kind of that. They're they're the fast and furious relationship that you want to see. Like the passionate. Like, yeah, like Taylor Swift's like Fire. red, where you're driving into like a dead end street, and like you know there would be so much passion and like fighting and screaming at 3 a.m. in the rain, but it would be magical to watch, but it's like not sustainable. So it's sexy versus romance. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Sexy That's what versus it is. sustainable. So it's really not about <laughs> preference overall. It's about preference in the moment, and for longevity's sake, Katang makes sense, especially if they were going to exist in Decorah. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't think anything would have, it would have just fizzled out. It would have been a, a big, yeah, explosive mess at the end. Yeah, and then, and then yeah, I don't know what would have happened. <laughs> Hello. Um, Hello. Hey. Uh, I have a question for Toph. During Legend of Korra, were you surprised about how uh, Toph handled her children? No. <laughs> uh, I, I would like to think that I personally have a bit more compassion when it comes to anything um, but it, it does not surprise me at all also with how she was raised though if I was raised in a which is why I'm kind of bummed she and Zuko didn't have more moments they both came from kind of a royal whatever super rich lineage but didn't quite fit into the mold of that lifestyle in one sense um, and I don't think you know, Zuko had his mom, and he was kind of hanging on to that for a long time, but Toph didn't. She had the badger moles. She didn't really have a confidant, aside from her secret life, uh, to really hold on to. So I think she had a hard time connecting with human beings. And unfortunately, if you develop that when you're, you know, 12 years old, uh, it kind of stays with you. And so I feel like she probably had a hard time connecting with these kids because she didn't know how to be nice to them because she felt like she was never listened to or given a chance to actually do her own thing. So it makes sense. I mean, would I have liked to see a, a happier, healthier relationship? Probably, but I'm not surprised. I understand where she was coming from, um, and I'm just glad that they turned out, I think, pretty decently. Lin and Suyin are pretty cool. I think, yeah, they, they did just fine for themselves, and you know, then Toph ran away into the mountains, so it makes sense. <laughs> Hi. Um, my name's Kaylin, and we, uh, some of my friends have a fan theory about Ty Lee. Okay. And that she might airbender? Be, yeah. Some of yeah. your friends, yeah. the internet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, she moves in a way that's very similar to Aang. They certainly look similar. Um, yeah, I, I think why not? It's, it's not? It's not out there for sure. Um, and what are the other reasons? <laughs> no, but I mean, there's like a lot of reasons that like you guys have to see. I am brain dead today. I'm Most not usually like of this. The airbenders she's have airbending. great eyes. Yeah, she looks like she's airbending. I mean, it and the eyes, right? Is like kind of where yes, everyone goes with is the eye color. Um, yeah, and facial structure. But I mean, she does move interesting. Yeah, I I think it's valid. Why not? Yeah. I'm curious if you're not like trained because you know. You start training when you're young, usually, when you're bending, and so you can get better at it. If she was just not recognized as being an airbender, and then it, her, her talent and her powers are never recognized, mm -hmm. does it just stay static? Does yeah, it stay in that adolescence? So she doesn't actually have the capability, even though maybe she was born with it? I don't know. I don't For know. sure. It's interesting. So tell your, tell your friends they're right. Okay. <laughs> AKA the internet. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hannah. I was wondering, uh, other than yourself, who is your favorite Avatar character? Ooh. I like bad girls, so I like, is it, but Zuko, really, because I feel like Zuko's, like, has the most depth, kind of, of any character and is going through the biggest struggle. Um, and I just love Dante's voice. He could read the phone book to me. Um, I, he does, he just, I don't know, it's just, <laughs> when you, it's just soothing. Um, yeah, so Zuko for me. And Azula, but Zuko. Zuzus? Uh, I would say, first of all, Appa is my favorite, you know, animal character. I love him, obviously, because I just told you that I love Appa's yep, last yep. days. Yep, yep. And um, this is a really weird one, but this is the teenage girl. Okay. Okay? okay. Don't judge me. Jet? Is it yes! Jet? Yeah, Jet. I was like, oh, what's happening? Oh, Katara, move out of the way! <laughs> Jet yeah. reminds me of the boys I used to have a Move crush on when I was, yeah, like, yeah, like 10. Jenny I like, and I yeah. like bad boys. We like, we, we like, like boys. Bad boys. Yeah. 
I um I like Uncle Iroh. <laughs> uh, he's the best, man. I mean, granted, we missed his tumultuous days, right? So we're watching everybody else struggle. He had his his days where he was like being all bad, and he's like, that's okay, he has what wisdom. Doing? Yeah, but that's why he's so wise. And he, his work ethic and his like calm persistence, he's just like the great example of how to handle just an erratic nephew like going crazy but also just keeping himself in line like he's when he steady. he's a good example of how to handle an erratic nephew yeah i love that <laughs> <laughs> there's so a quote for you guys <laughs> i love there's a quote and so i also love uh, there's a hair <laughs> all right um, i also love that when he's in prison he is like cool 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 yeah, this sucks, but you know what? I'm going to get ripped. I'm going to take advantage of this time and make myself a 12-pack, and all these suckers are not going to know what hit them. And I'm like, that is a good idea. <laughs> so I, what else can you do in prison? Yeah, sit around and do nothing. That's but right. Doesn't you do better that. do some yeah. ab work. Yep. So, yeah, I, I love Uncle Iroh. And I also love Greg Baldwin. He's, oh, gosh, I love him. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cody. Hi, Cody. Nice and, belt. Oh, thank you. And uh, my question is, if all three of your characters could form a rock band, what would Ooh. the name of the band be, and what would your first song be? Michaela will have an answer for this. This, this might take some branding uh, discussion. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, well, it's your bandit babes, basically, right? Yeah. Well, we so would be... I guess so. I like that. We would just be the bandit babes. We're the bandit babes. babes. So we... I. I created some Toph merch because Dante inspired me because he had a couple like honor t-shirts and you know cool things whatever and some people were like where's Earth Kingdom and I'm like yeah where's Earth Kingdom and like box lunch is fine but like what would Toph actually wear it would have to be comfortable probably a little minimalist and comfortable so um, <laughs> I realized I said that twice that was on purpose so these two lovely ladies were like hey it'd be cool to like make some crop tops for like Suki and Ty Lee for the summer and I was like cool let's be like bandit babes because I was the blind bandit so that that's kind of how we incorporated it so yeah so that's our pop group that's our pop totally group. We'd be the bandit babes what would our first song be Mmm, not that tunnel song we got <laughs> no, not no. that tunnel <laughs> song. Yeah, I go with something a little bit more <laughs> sassy mmm <laughs> this is there's so many different directions yeah. also specifically genre exactly oh my gosh <laughs> because we all kind of have different personalities so we'd have to come to some sort of middle ground right that's a tough one we'd have maybe we'd have to think that. on we'll it think can on we get back one. to you yeah. we'll email you we'll ponder that <laughs> but yeah this song is called the middle ground oh the middle ground I'm a ground. songwriter. See, I knew it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Okay, the middle ground. That's apparently our first song. Yeah. Hi, my name is Hi. Rose. Hey, Rose. Um, I was wondering what kind of projects would you want to do in the future? Like, would you go back to doing animated Nickelodeon shows, or what kind of things are you looking to do? Well, this one is is kicking and. Yeah, you you go. Me? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm always trying to do more anime because uh, anime is weirdly this like very small world and you talk to anime actors and you're like, I'm dying to do anime and they're like, we're trying to do mainstream work, you know? Uh, because up until maybe about five years ago, anime was very kind of... Got even less than five years ago, very under the table. It was like you didn't tell people you did anime in the industry. It was very looked down upon. And now it's so mainstream with Crunchyroll on HBO and all this stuff. It's it's really kind of where it's at. It's what the kids are watching for sure, right? Um, and I'm old, so I'm always trying to stay relevant. So a anime really, um, and because I love doing cons and seeing you guys and hearing your stories and everything. Um, and then I always wanted to do mocap. Um, which is motion capture for video games. Have you done it? Yeah. <sighs> I can't, I can't put jealous. mocap to save I my life. I want to do it. Yeah. Um, remind me to tell you about my terrible mocap audition for I'll Lord of the Rings you. once. Um, <laughs> but terrible. Um, but uh, yeah, so anime and mocap is just kind of interesting to me. Um, but yeah, I just like doing animation in general and, and all that stuff. I, Nickelodeon's interesting because I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, what other... Because I get... Hey Arnold, residuals all the time, so that's how I know it's still running. Um, I'm like, what other network is showing all their content from 25 years ago? So, yeah, so, yeah it's weird, right? So I feel like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on with Nick. Like, I, I miss their Nicktoons and all that stuff. Um, but, right, everyone's nodding their head. Okay, so I'm not out of line here. Um, but, yeah, just, just all of the above. I just like working. Jenny? Just, I, I, just truly, any, any I, I just like working, you know, like for real. Jenny? Yeah, um, 
You know, my pandemic, it's funny, like this is a little bit of a vacation for me, but my pandemic, it's like I've had to go away to rest, but I've been working because I have like my home studio. So I've been doing a lot of anime and I have a couple games coming out next year that people are always like, sure you do, but I, we're not ever allowed to talk about it. And, um, and I have something hopefully coming out on camera, which would be fun to see, you know, in a different light. But um, other than my voiceover work and anime work, uh, I've been dabbling more behind the scenes, like with producing. Like I was going full steam, kind of trying to revamp a show I used to be on, but it was just so much work. I literally, there's just only one of me, you know. Um, but like people say that they want women producers, women content, women driven things. And I'm like, well, here we are, you know, are you going to give us a chance? And so just trying to keep plugging away at that on the other side um, to just kind of get some things through, it just takes time. So starting to do that more as well as just like, again, my voiceover work, which has been very fruitful. So very happy about that. Yeah. One more question. Okay. I'll answer really quickly. You guys better be entering over here. Yeah, yeah you, you guys are. look great. You guys look amazing. Very, very good. Um, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm 27. Uh, I was an actress, and then I like stopped cold turkey because I thought I wanted to be a cardiovascular surgeon. And so then I went into like intense math science mode, and then I went to Yale, and I was like, just kidding. Med Jesus. seems crazy. So then I found screenwriting, and then I went to New York and did some musical theater and sang in a cover band, and then I moved to LA because COVID. And so now I'm back in voiceover, trying to do some writing and producing, and yeah, yeah figuring it out. Okay, last question. <laughs> right here. Hi. <laughs> so when I was with Olivia yesterday, she said that she didn't read the script. Did you guys read it? The script? Yeah, they're professional actors. Well, it, 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 it's out here on a wing. And Olivia play. is just a star, so yeah. you know <laughs> she can just wing it. The uh, it depended on how much homework I had that week. <laughs> right. If I had time to read it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you guys, since that was our last question. Can, can we take a quick, yeah. Can we do a quick happy selfie birthday video for Jenny's mom? Birthday 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 birthday. with you guys. Okay, cool. Thank you guys so much. It's been Thank a you pleasure. Guys. Thank you guys. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.